I think because I have so much invested in the pastels now, I, I pretty much stay with them. Um, and I feel more comfortable with that. I do love, I still go back to charcoals and pencils and um, I love sketching, uh, but I, the pastels are my favorite. Hey, I learners, and welcome to episode 175 of the Kameno Voice. Today I speak with the featured artist of the month for April and the owner of Jamie Wick Art. Please welcome Jamie Wick. Hi, I'm Brandon Erickson, and you're listening to the Kameno Voice Podcast, where I interview local business owners, comedians, singers, and more. I dive into their backstory to find out how they got where they are, what are some of the tips for you to do the same, and find out where they are going. Tune in every week as I interview more of the people you see every day. Hey, Islanders, and welcome to another episode of the Kameno Voice, where we release a new episode every Tuesday. I uh, hope you guys had a good week. We had a typical Washington April weather of lots of water, rain, and a little bit of sunshine. Um, and uh, yeah, had the weekend with the kiddos. Uh, wife was out of town, so yeah, survived that. And uh, everyone's still alive and kicking, so we're good. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to throw it out there just because I like to uh, just talk on this thing, I guess. Um, but anyways, I've been playing around with the idea of possibly starting another podcast um, and making one focused on uh, team, b- team building and, and leadership in kind of the retail space. So specifically focused on how do you keep strong team culture and um, how do you keep that in a space that typically has a lot of turnover? Um, there, there's a lot of companies that do this um, really well. Uh, and I would love to dive into those, um, talk through those, um, me approaching this, not as the expert, but more as a student and learning, um, from people who have done it better than myself, um, and continue to do that. And and I'm just continuing to grow in that area. So it's an area I'm really interested in and and would love to maybe, um, explore more, um, and, and would like to do that in a podcast, um, format. So Anyways, let me know on Instagram or Facebook or email me at voice at CaminoCommons.com if that sounds like something you'd be interested in or if you know anyone that would be. Um, Yeah. Anyways, just want to pass that along. Um, This is just in like think about it mode right now. So anyways, no guarantee that that's going to happen. But uh, depending on the response, maybe it will. All right. Uh, We're going to jump into this podcast, though. And today I'm speaking with uh, Jamie Wick, who is, uh, as I mentioned in the intro, going to be the featured artist of the month for April in 2023. So if that if you come visit between um, uh, the third week in April through the second-ish week in May, um, you will see her stuff on the featured artist of the month uh, up in the loft here at the Marketplace on Camino Island um, at Camino Commons. So um, be sure to stop by and check out her stuff. Uh, she is a pastel artist, um, which is... I believe she's the first pastel artist we've had on the podcast. So that's exciting. Um, And so we we get into kind of how pastels work, how they're different from the other art forms, what drew her to that, uh, and and all of that. So anyways, um, yeah, be sure to check out her artwork. Um, We have a link to her website, but if you can, try and get up here during the time period to check it out on the wall. So without further, further ado, here is my conversation with Jamie Wick. Hey, Islanders, and welcome to another episode of the Camino Voice. Today, I'm here with the featured artist of the month in the loft for the month of April of 2023, uh, as well as the owner of Jamie Wick Art. Welcome to the podcast, Jamie Wick. Hi, thank you. Yeah, so before we get started, tell us a little bit about Jamie. Um, so I grew up in Everett, um, lived there most of my life, and then got married and moved to Stanwood about 10, 10 years ago. Um, I first got started in art in high school. Um, It just, I didn't really like it. I started out with stick figures and um, low self-esteem about it. Um, But I had a teacher that I absolutely loved, Mrs. Melby. Um, And I wanted to impress her and make her happy. And uh, I tried to be in her class as much as possible in high school. So I started excelling at art and was in... Um, advanced placement with her and teacher's aid, um, anything I could do just, and she really inspired me and pushed me to do 
to do my best, and so I always appreciated her. Um, and then I didn't really touch art for a while. Um, okay. And I don't know, I did the married life and job and things like that, and then um, I kind of started missing it. So I went and got some pastels because I remember I kind of liked it in school, and I let seen other pastel artists and I love their style and color and um, so I really wanted to, to go for that and try it and anything I can do to make with my hands you know yeah. get messy with my hands and um, I just kind of fell in love with it and just practiced and played with it and kind of went from there nice so yeah the um, First of all, I think you're our first pastel artist that we've ever had on the podcast, so that's exciting. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, the, the other thing I wanted to note is uh, I never got past stick figures um, with, <laughs> with drawing, but um, we had a, uh, I was an engineer, and so when I was going to college, there was a gal that was in our class that when she was in class, uh, she would draw like entire f- like stories of stick figures. And she eventually created, like, superhero personas for everyone in the class. And anyway, so stick figures can get very creative. They can. That actually sounds like fun. <laughs> and, and one time she actually, at the end of the, at a, after a long lecture, she went up to our physics professor and was like, look, this is what I drew during your class. <laughs> I'm sure that scored a lot of points. I know. <laughs> he was one of the coolest professors, though. He was like, I, I don't think you should be telling me this. <laughs> But anyways, um, so when you were starting to get into art in high school, mm-hmm. what, what mediums were you working with uh, during that time? Um, every, I think every medium that the school could get their hands on mm-hmm. and introduce to us. So a lot of pencil drawing. I did really love charcoal in okay. high school and then watercolors and acrylic paints and sculptures was a lot of fun too. I liked doing the sculptures. Yeah. Nice. Um, okay, so then as you, so you said you were in high school, um, what did you do after high school then? Um, started working. I, um, needed the money and pay the bills, so, um, I got into banking and just kind of evolved from there and, um, banking to accounting and back and forth with that a little bit. Okay. So, yeah, so I'm currently doing accounting for Snohomish County. Okay. Nice. Was that an industry or anything that you were looking to get into, or is it just something you kind of fell into and then? I just kept kind going? of fell into it, um, and was it was I was good at it, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then I didn't really have interest to learn anything else and just evolve where I was. So I guess I was comfortable. Yeah. You could say that. Yeah, that's great. Well, and I, I think it's great you you were doing banking, which is. Fairly, I mean, it's complex, but it's fairly dry and things like that. And then, Very dry, yes. And then art on the other side. So, yes. like, you're using both sides of your brain on that. Exactly. Nice. Awesome. So, when you decided to get back into uh, painting and stuff, you said you mm-hmm. kind of fell into pastels. What, were you looking back into any of the mediums you had done previously? Yes. Yeah, so, actually, I did start out with acrylic okay. um, with that. and. Again, it was maybe something I was comfortable with, but I didn't really push myself very hard, and I don't think my acrylic paintings were as good. Um, But then, and I could go in and play with the pastels and layer them, and I guess I was being more creative with what I could do with them versus what I was doing, and paint seemed really flat to me. Okay. Yeah. Nice. What was it about pastel that that, uh, drew you to it, and how did you kind of find pastel versus the other mediums? So I started out with a very cheap um, pastel set that I got at Michael's, and then I learned that that's actually just fancy chalk. It's not really pastels at all. Oh, um, okay. Um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Um, but yeah, so you, you started out with uh, going to Michael's and getting kind of a... Yes. Okay. So yeah, so I had a... Um, cheap pastels and was looking at other artists and what they were able to do with pastels. And so I started asking questions because I was not achieving the colors or the goals that I was seeing, you know, that they had. Um, So other artists were pointing me in the direction of what products to use, what pastels and what special papers are better than others. And um, so when I it is kind of an expensive hobby. So once okay. I started getting those funds together and I started um, investing in better products, then I actually saw results that I was starting to, um, that I was wanting to achieve. And that pushed me to 
you know, work for those a little bit harder. Yeah. So. Very cool. But yeah. So when it comes to uh, pastel, so I've, I've learned a lot about like, um, you know, in previous podcasts, I've interviewed people that do watercolor mm -hmm. uh, and the, a lot of reasons they've chosen that is because it's very portable. It's easy to do anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but, but negative sides can be that like, it's actually never dry, dry. Like if you right. get it wet again, it starts going again. Uh, and then acrylic, it's like, it's again, it's somewhat easy to take and do it wherever. Mm -hmm. um, and some people like that it dries really fast, so you can just keep going. And mm -hmm. some people don't like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then with oil painting, obviously, just it takes a lot of space and time. Um, but what is it? Uh, I, I haven't done a lot of uh, her talk to a lot of people um, in the pastel art. How does it can you kind of walk us through the process and, and what it really entails? So there's many types of pastels. So you can get like a hard pastel, um, a soft pastel. And what that is, is it's really just um, pure pigment that's pressed together to form a stick or um, chalk, you know, like a chalk form. Okay. Um, or there's pastel pencils also. Uh, I use all three of those. I don't travel with pastels. There are some people that do plein air painting with pastels. Um, I'm too scared to travel with them because they are very um, expensive and breakable. So okay. I am sc I'm scared to travel with them. <laughs> but there there are artists that, that do that. I do have everything. Um, I have a home studio with everything organized and colorized and um, work with that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So does it... Um, are you doing it on a, like a paper or a canvas or what do you I do it on? I use paper. Um, okay. I use, I like to experiment with different types of paper. Um, okay. I, I primarily use sanded paper. Okay. Um, and you can, the deeper, the larger grit of the sandpaper, um, which I use UART is the brand that I use. Um, it holds more pigment. You can, uh, layer more, more onto that paper. Okay. Then you can with a flat surface, so it'll start just kind of mudding together. Yeah. So, so then um, as you do, like, one layer, um, can you do, I, I'm assuming you can do, I know you can do multiple layers, but, like, is there kind of a limit of how many layers before it starts getting too thick in the chalk and it's yeah, not Yeah, again, it, it depends on the paper. Um, little tricks that I've learned is you could take a paintbrush and kind of dust off part of it and start maybe relayering. Um, okay. But... You kind of have to stick with with what you're you know you're doing because um, you can't really erase it too well. Yeah, so. and and does it kind of come like you've kind of described it as like a harder soft chalk? Mm -hmm. um, so are you basically working with these like chalk sticks then? And using yeah, that? yep. So basically, it's 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 like similar to chalk, but it's the the pure pigment. Um, but yeah, you just make your marks on on the paper. Mm -hmm. I kind of usually go off of a reference photo that I've taken. I like to stick with things in places that I've seen. Okay. Um, so then I kind of sketch it out and then um, just start layering and making the marks on the paper until it just starts coming together. Okay. And yeah. are you sketching on the paper that you're drawing on or a side sketch to the side of kind of like what you wanted? Um, so I do an initial, I do some black and white sketches on just regular plain paper. Yeah. Um, and then get a general idea of where I want the painting to go. Okay. Um, and then I usually have two pieces of paper on, so I have a board on my easel and so I've got two papers and the, so the one that's not my painting, um, I'll do test colors. So I okay. go through and see what colors that are going to go together and, yeah. um, the values that I want to use and things like that. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so, and, and. I know some of these questions might sound very amateurish, but it's partially because I've not seen or worked uh, with pastel or pastel artists. Mm -hmm. um, it's so it's completely dry from a, when you're as you're doing it. Very dry, yes. Oh, okay. no, yeah, it's no water. Um, you can do a wash. Um, I do that ever so often. You, I'll do a wash on the paper first if I want a background color or um, if I want to layer on top of a darker base okay. then I will t usually take um, you can do it with gouache paint or I will take chalk or pastel um, and draw out a basic sketch and then take um, rubbing alcohol and paint it over the top of that and then I can once that dries then I will go back over it with the pastels okay yeah. cool very cool so then um, 
Okay, so then as you you're you're layering and building us all up, then mm-hmm. um, once it's finished, what do you do to to finish it off? I used to. You can use a, a spray, a fixative okay. on top of it, um, and I used to do that religiously. And then I did learn that that actually can start stealing. Uh, the pigment off of the surface oh, or turning okay. it yellow. So I stay away with, stay away from that for the most part. There are some um, certain brands that are better than others. So if necessary, then I will um, I will use it. But I have seen on my own paintings where it doesn't look the same as it had originally done it when yeah. I used the fixative. So um, I do use a glassine paper. It's like a waxed paper. Okay. Um, and lay that over the surface to protect it, or I'll frame it right away, um, okay. depending on where I'm going with the painting. Yeah. So then once you frame it, do you have to be fairly careful not to let it, like, get shaken or anything? Yes. Because it'll start. Yes. Yeah, the dust will start, you know, unsettling and falling into the mat. Okay. I usually use, a, like, a white um, mat, so you do have to be careful, otherwise the dust will start falling onto the, the mat. You can uh, put spacers in the mat, so that okay. way, if it does get banged, that the dust will kind of fall behind the mat yeah. and then onto it. But yeah, you do have to be pretty careful with it. Yeah, very cool. So then as you kind of, uh, you got into pastels and doing that process, what, um, did, you guys, did you take some classes or anything like that, or are there people you follow? Um, there's, I, I do follow a lot of artists, especially on Instagram. It's, it's a, you can get lost in all the, you know, beautiful artists out there. Yeah. And I do have some favorites. Uh, Teresa Say is one of my, um, artistic idols. And so she was one of the first people that I had taken a class from. Um, there's the Dakota Art Center in, uh, Mount Vernon, where I usually get most of my pastels from. And then they do classes there, um, uh, with, with artists, um, so I've taken a couple, you know, classes there, and she was one of my favorites. So I was very excited to do that. But I'm pretty much self-taught for the most part, um, and have just taken a couple, couple classes. But okay. yeah, I learned from my mistakes. <laughs> so <laughs> nice. Um, so is that something? Uh, have you? Do you at this point? Do you still play around with other mediums, or do you primarily just stay within the pastel? I think because I have so much invested in the pastels now, I. I pretty much stay with them um and I feel more comfortable with that I do love I still go back to charcoals and pencils and um I love sketching uh but I the pastels are my favorite I do kind of I've never actually tried oil painting before so okay. that's maybe um something I might want to try down the road yeah. Um, but yeah for now I, I just love the pastels and I'm getting pretty comfortable with them so. yeah what is your um uh, a lot of artists, and, and it's fine if you're very broad too, mm-hmm. um, but a lot of artists kind of do like landscapes or portraits or animals or flowers or what's kind of your yeah. general... So I I love landscapes mm-hmm. and um, anything that with reflection. So uh, I do a lot of water and skies. Um, I love birds. I love painting birds and okay. recently started getting into still life also. Okay. Um, but again, as things with reflective surfaces, so I'd like bowls, silver bowls and, you know, things like that. Yeah. So nice. Very cool. And so with like, with, when you get with all the pastel colors and stuff, do you, mm-hmm. does it kind of look like a giant Crayola box? <laughs> like, of just layouts of all these different shades and everything? Yes. So everything, I have everything color coordinated. My um, father-in-law is, um, has a side business of making cabinets. And okay. he actually had built me uh, this tray with all these slots in it. And he, he said it's to hold your crayons. Um, <laughs> but everything, so every slot is, is dedicated to a color. And then I have everything organized by shade and value. And so it does. It looks like a nice little rainbow on my table. So Very cool. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, cool. And so then, um, uh, what is your, your, can you walk us through your process of kind of the, um, cr- uh, creating a painting, like start to finish? Yeah. So I usually wait for the inspiration to come to me, but I, I do love going out and taking pictures. Um, I do a lot of photography mm-hmm. just for myself and I usually do that with the intent of using it as a reference photo at some point. Okay. 
Um, so if I'm really wanting to paint, I'll just go through my photos and find something that just kind of jumps out at me and say, yeah, I want to paint that. Um, or if there's uh, a still life that I kind of have in my head, like, oh, I really want to put this together and, and use that, then I'll set up a little station, um, a little still life station in the studio. Um, then I will put my paper, I was, so I have a standing easel, so I like to stand up when I, when I paint, and um, so I'll tape my paper to the surface on the easel and um, sketch out, so usually I'll take like a um, pastel pencil, and I'll kind of lightly sketch out where I'm doing, and okay. I have this weird process that I have to paint from um, top to bottom, left to right, and okay. I do every painting that way, which I don't know a lot of artists that do that, but yeah. that's kind of my weird, my weird quirk. That so I do every <laughs> painting top to bottom, left to right. Um, but and then I take a lot of times so I'll step back a lot and look at it from a distance, and so I'm I'm walking around a lot while I'm painting and okay, um, always listening to different music with the with the painting, so that depending on uh, the mood that I want the painting to have, then that's the kind of music that I'll, I'll listen to. So I'll, a lot of it's classical. I love listening to classical music when I paint, yeah. but um, I've been going into some jazz and, and swing music and things oh, like that fun. too. So, nice. um, so What, I what type it. of painting would you do, would you be trying to work on or mood would you be going for if you were listening to swing music? I think the last swing music one, I was doing a pastel painting of Christmas ornaments. So okay. it doesn't really, um, I think I was just having more fun dancing yeah. around with it, but it was, there were shiny ornaments yeah. and I just was having it's a lot a of fun with time it. Of year yeah. And all those. yeah. That's awesome. Very cool. When you're, the, the, that top to bottom, left to right thing was really interesting. Because sometimes when you're doing a painting, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. there's, there's layers. And so there's certain times where you kind of, want to not start there how do you kind of work through that on some of the paintings I think maybe a lot of it is um, I do a lot of sky and water um, so I'll put in like the base layer of the sky and then the the horizon line and I'll do then I'll work the clouds and then kind of go then and then if there's you want to have a little bit of color up the same color up top that you're using on the bottom so then I'll go through and Put ad additional color here and there, but for the initial part of it, it is, yeah, always left to right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Very cool. So then, um, so you, you'll um, start playing music that kind of gets you into the mood mm -hmm. of, of what you want that pain to be, and then how does that kind of finish out? Um, I, I guess I don't understand the question. Sorry. Oh, no. Um, so... <laughs> We were just working through your process of kind of your mm -hmm. your full process, artistic process. Um, so you mentioned that you, you paint top top to bottom, left to right. And then, you know, you'll start later, you know, you'll start, uh, you'll listen to music that kind of mm -hmm. shapes the mood that you want the painting to do. Um, how do you kind of know when you're, you're getting near the end and then... I guess you really don't. I don't know that I'm yeah. really to the end until I feel... I can't go any further. I've maybe pushed the pigment a little too much. Then I know I'm done. <laughs> um, or there's times where I will feel that I'm finished, but I, there might be, I'm not sure about it. So I will put it aside. And there's been times where I've been there for several months and then I'll, I'll go back to it, you know, just cause I finally figured out what it was missing. Yeah. So, um, and I do, I have a, a bare wall in the in the room and I will constantly be putting things up on the wall just so I can stare at them for a while and I feel like the more that I stare at it from a distance I'll eventually figure out what it's missing yeah when you talked about the photography and then um, finding a picture that um, is the perspective and everything you want for mm -hmm. a painting um, do you ever have it where you're you have a, a photo that's like almost what you want but not quite where you have to either go back and retake that photo or you adjust the perspective? I, no, I think I just get the general idea from the photo. Okay. Um, I have, there. for example, there was one photo that I took of a landscape when I was visiting Montana. And I have used that photo, gosh, probably 15, 20 times. And the, oh, cool. and the painting is different every single, every single time I use it. So um, sometimes it'll be more detailed than others. Sometimes it'll be more abstract looking. Um, the sky colors might change, which... Um, you know, 
it changes the rest of the the dynamic of yeah. the, the painting as well. Yeah. So, very so cool. yeah, so I just kind of get a general idea from a painting and um, change it. Sometimes I will take more than one photo and combine the two and use bits and pieces from different photos to create one painting. Okay, very cool. Um, so when did you, so you, you know, you were, you've gotten into the process and, and doing pastels and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Did this just start as something you were going to do as a hobby and in, and do it on the side, or when did you kind of decide to take it and actually try and run with it? Um, I think I was running out of room in my house. Um, <laughs> I, the paintings just started stacking up, and so I, I had an Etsy site, and I was gonna, like, well, maybe I'll try selling selling them just so I can make more room in the house and <laughs> not have them you know, destroying each other. And things actually went very well um, selling them online a lot better than I thought yeah which got me excited to to do better to try more and um, I think I just kind of ran with it there and and um, I've only been really doing this probably the last three four years okay um, and just it's been really exciting to see myself evolve and compare you know my work now to work just a few years ago and yeah. see the improvement and so it makes me I guess excited to want to do more or to keep pushing myself further and um, and I didn't really know too much about how to get you know exposure or where to show your art and I just kind of jumped into it like I, I joined some societies or the like Northwest Pastel Society and things okay. um, and just started joining groups and learned that there's so much in this area yeah. Um, yeah of how to get involved artistically and I got even more excited about it and found out you know there's so much even just close to my home just to get involved in so um, that's kind of where I went with it. That's great. Yeah. Where, did you, um, when COVID and everything hit, was that something, uh, did your work have you be, or have you working at home? And was that, did that allow you to get more into it? Or? Absolutely. Um, because before I, I was commuting to, you know, ever, it was like a couple hours, you know, car ride every you know, every day. And yeah. so, so I only had time to paint on the weekends. And then usually that was filled with something else, you yep. know? And so, yeah, absolutely. COVID has given me a lot more time because I do work from home now majority oh, okay. of the time. Wow. Um, so I have a home office and then right next door is my little studio. So then I can just turn off the light in the office and then go next the room next door and start painting. So, That's great. Yeah. So it, it does work out really well for me. Awesome. When you were uh, starting to research and, and get into, like, mm -hmm. the other art communities and figure out that you could do other things, um, when was the first time you got into, like, a, a either a gallery or a physical space, and what was that like? Um, I I joined a group called um, Skagit, I think it's Skagit Artists. Okay. Um, so I joined their group, and they had all on their website was all these calls for artists and to for that group to participate in this show or this show or some of it was juried some of it wasn't mm -hmm. um and it just kind of really piqued my curiosity to to see what other groups and what was out there um so and then i i found the the loft here and yeah absolutely love this space so yeah, yeah. very cool so um, that brings us to, uh, tell us about the pieces that you're going to be bringing to the loft. Um, I like to bring pieces. I've been, I've been showing here for about a year now, I think. Um, and I've, I've tried other types of artwork here. And I feel that the um, probably island style, the Camino Island vibe is very important in this community. So a lot of waters and skies. Um, very um lots of blues and greens and um sunsets and nice. lots of water sunset um, yeah. paintings so that's awesome. kind of what do I'll you be have doing. a lot of uh beach related uh photos or paintings i do I, I i do a lot of uh beach um, paintings, and then my husband also is a fisherman. Okay. Um, I mean, by hobby, but uh, so he is actually always sending me photos when he's out on the water, saying, "Oh, you should paint this. You should do this." Oh, and cool. So he gives me a lot of um, material to work with, also. But yeah, I love doing, um, 
you know, hori- island horizons and skies yeah. and waters. Awesome. Is there a favorite beach that you have either in this area that you like to, that you've gone back to a few times? I've gone to uh, Kima Beach um, quite a few times, and then I'm actually really loving, I, I'm not sure what this is when you're going over the bridge, yeah. and they have that... Um, the new dike and all the that The new stuff. dike yeah. and all the water, like the reflections on yes. all the water there. So I keep going there, especially at sunrise. Yes. Um, and as I love to catch the sunrise coming off that water. So. Yeah. No, a lot of times, uh, I'm not sure you're driving over at sunrise, but when I'm driving <laughs> over that area, you just look across and it's very picturesque. Yes, like, it's beautiful. Yeah. So I do, I do keep going over there. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Well, for those who are listening, um, as this is coming, going to be releasing soon, uh, be sure you come by if you're listening to this during the month of uh, third week in April through the third week in or like second week in May. Be sure to stop by to check out uh, Jamie's work that she's going to be bringing up here to the loft. Um, awesome. So um, we like to end every podcast with some rapid fire questions. Okay. So the first one is what purchase of $100 or less have you endured the most in the last three months? So I would say probably um, I have recently downloaded a Gibson guitar app. Okay. And that has, I am learning to play acoustic guitar. Nice. And so I have been st- playing steadily every day, I would say probably for the last couple of months. Nice. So, but yeah, that's my new, my new favorite toy. <laughs> Very cool. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. Do you have your calluses all built up then? I do actually. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, uh, I've played guitar on and off. And the thing I always struggled with, or a lot, one of the things, is always learning to do the bar chords and getting the strength to actually, like, hold all of the strings for that. Well, and I think I learned a lot, too, that I was pushing down way harder than necessary. So mm, my yeah. fingers were, again, yeah, hurting a little bit. Right. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> all right. Who's the most influential person outside of your family in your life? I would say um, my friend Christy, um, who has always been the positive, um, positive person in my life. She's always on, I can go to her for anything, um, and she's always going to give me an honest perspective, um, whether I want to or not. Yeah. And um, you know, she's always got like the mom life and works hard, and she's always been a good influence for me. Very cool. All right, this is a fill in the blank question. I know this is weird, but I've always wanted to blank. I always wanted to be a figure skater. Okay. Um, that was something that I've always found beautiful. I always wanted to do because it looks super, um, it looks very free. Yeah. Um, and the reason that makes it weird is because I am the most uncoordinated <laughs> um, person you will ever meet. And I wouldn't be able to stand on an ice skate if my life depended on it. So <laughs> That's so, that's cool. All right. Uh, who is an interesting or fascinating person that I should interview next? Um, this is somebody that I, I don't know too well. Um, but when I was doing Art by the Bay this last fall, um, I had a booth next to a beautiful photographer named Sonia Lang. Okay. Um, she, we kind of became uh, online like Facebook friends. And I, she is showing her work in a lot of places Um and she just does beautiful photography and travels, you know, all over to get these beautiful photos. And I just, I don't know, I would love to um, see more of her work. So nice. um, she's a very good photographer. Awesome. All right. And lastly, what piece of advice would you give your 20 year old self? Um, I would say don't tell myself that I can't. Um, and I, I tell myself that a lot now and I want to do all the things and, and try everything. And, um, I would say my younger self never thought it was either possible or that I could do it. And there's things that I would just wish I would have done a lot sooner. So yeah. I would definitely say that. Very cool. Well, it's never too late for figure skating. Yes. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Uh-huh. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And listeners, again, if you're listening to this uh, in the month of April, um, through that beginning of May, be sure to stop in and check out her work. And Islanders, I will talk to you on the next one. Well, a big thank you to Jamie Wick for joining me on the podcast today. And thank you for listening. If you haven't already, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast platform. It really helps us be found by other Islanders like yourself. And don't forget to send me an email or message me on Instagram or Facebook uh, and let me know what your thoughts are on maybe possibly a new podcast. 
Um, I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, don't forget to tell your friends about the greatest little podcast, uh, Focus on Tomato Island in the Northwest. And uh, yeah, with that, I will see you guys on the next one.